Hello, Jeweler. Welcome to the module on what is marketing. And in this video, we're going to be going over exactly that. What is marketing? So number one, we're going to go over a very quick brief review of the Entrepreneur's Operating System or EOS. Number two, we're going to go over some misconceptions about marketing. And there are a lot of misconceptions about marketing. And then three, I'm going to give you a good, helpful definition. And then four, we're going to go over measuring success because how can you know that you have this system, this marketing system down pat that you really understand it without being able to measure things? So what we're going to do is go over number one, a review of the entrepreneur's operating system. So if you remember, we just went over the entrepreneur's operating system. And in that video, we talked about how leadership, you, um, or whoever is in leadership in your particular business is in charge of deciding what gets made based on their conceptions, their beliefs, where they live, who they talk to. Um, and then what is made and the offer, the value that you have that you bring to your clients uh, is then marketed to the mass market, the people, your audience, your ideal clients. And those uh, dictate who comes into your sales system. So marketing brings people into a sales system. And if that sales system is honed in and does a really good job of uh, hitting the pain points that they're talking about and that they really, really want to, to have fixed, then you'll get some conversions and people that are actually buying. Those people then, their money is funneled into an operation system, which could consist of your employees. It could consist of, uh, of clientele, email marketing, and keeping those people in the system so, you're con so you get a good lifetime value out of them. And then the finances that come out of all of this based on the money that you made, the money that it took to, to make a product, the income that you get from this, the profits that you have afterwards. And then it is an entire system which feeds back on itself and the leadership decides, okay, this is working or it's not working and we, what, we need to fix some things uh, or we are doing something really well and we want to do more of that. So... Uh, as we talked about before, there was the marketing system, and it has its environment, its inputs, processes, outputs, and really, we're going to do a deep dive into this marketing system um, before we move on to uh, anything else. And this entire this entire course really is going to be a deep dive at how is it that top one percent? I mean, probably honestly, less than top one percent jewelers are doing their marketing. How is it that they're getting uh, the share, the lion's share of the market? And what is it that they're, that's separating them from other people? And I'm going to teach you how to do that yourself too. So if you have a jewelry business and you want to seriously separate yourself and you want to get the kind of success that I've been able to achieve with my clients or the success that the jewelers that you look up to are achieving, then I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to do. So that this part of your system will for sure be in uh, be in great shape. And so marketing assumes, again, like this is this is a system that feeds into itself. Marketing assumes the presence of leadership and value creation. So you cannot get into marketing before you have a defined leadership, whether it be you or someone else who makes the decisions and, and is in charge, and you have something to sell. You have value, you create value, you have an offer. So before you have leadership, uh, before you have marketing, you need to have leadership and, and you need to have some sort of offer, some sort of valuable creation that you're, that you are marketing. Uh, you cannot market nothing and uh, you need someone to be able to do this and to make decisions on how it works anyway. Now, this is something that's very interesting, and, and I don't think a lot of people understand this, and I, I just want to touch on this very briefly. You can use marketing to guarantee a valuable offer. So if you're afraid, for example, that, well, okay, I have leadership, and I have an offer, but I don't know if it's valuable, because right now people aren't buying it, or I don't know what I'm supposed to create. I don't know what kind of jewelry people want. How am I supposed to know that if I pour money 
into something that people are actually going to want to buy it later on? And that's an awesome question. And most people really mess this up. They end up making something that, you know, they think is a great idea. They think it's the, it's the newest, coolest thing and nobody buys it. It bombs. And we don't want that. And so you can actually use marketing and I'm going to teach you how to do this. You can use marketing to guarantee that you have a valuable offer that will sell. And the concept that we're going to talk about is called sell before build. And we'll touch about that um, on a later video and then you'll hear about it throughout the course as well. But sell before build is something that we are going to use so that we understand that we truly do have a great offer that exactly hits the pain points of our ideal client so that we know if we put this in front of them, they will not be able to resist it. It's an irresistible offer. So that was a slight, that was a small review of the entrepreneur's operating system. And now we're just going to get into some misconceptions about marketing. So what isn't marketing? So if you talk about yourself, like you're a marketer, you, you say that I'm getting into marketing, um, that we're doing marketing, you might get some pushback because people have a lot of misconceptions about what marketing is. Oh, you're, you're hurting people. You're, uh, you're scamming people. And we have ideas of really loud personalities on TV who are lying to people and scamming people. What we're going to get into is what marketing is not. And this is going to be very, very helpful for you. If you're afraid of marketing, you're afraid of sales. Um, this is going to seriously help you to understand what true marketing is, but here's what marketing is not. Marketing is not manipulating people with lies about your product or your competition about them, etc. You're not lying to people. Marketing is not lying. It, you have to be completely truthful in marketing in order for it to be ethical, in order for you to have a business that will be sustainable. Marketing is not manipulating people. It's also not high pressure tactics used to squeeze every last penny out of someone. It's not doing whatever you can to get the sale out of someone. It's not using as many closers as you can possibly think of with all their fancy names just to make sure that that, that person does definitely buy from you right now, right in front of you. It's also not beating your competition to a pulp. And I hear this and I see this all the time and it's just silly. Marketing is not, you don't get into marketing and do great marketing so that you can fight your competition. If you do marketing the way that I'm going to teach you, you won't have to worry about competition. You don't have competition if you do marketing, if you do marketing really, really well. Uh, and you won't need to beat anybody to a pulp. In fact, there'll be plenty of room for them to win and for you to win if you do this and you play this well. And marketing also is not forcing introverts to be extroverts and take on an entirely different personality than real life. And if your thoughts about marketing are um, late night TV ads that go on for hours and really, really loud people who are who have explosive personalities who are incredibly charismatic, that's not marketing either. It's just not. So marketing done right should be missed when it's gone. If you're doing marketing correctly, people should want to see it. They should want to hear about it. They should want to know that it's there. And you should get a lot of great positive feedback on your marketing. Marketing done right should not be loud and intrusive. It should be missed if it's not there. So what is a helpful definition of what marketing is? Now I'm going to give you what I believe to be the best definition of what marketing is. And this is a definition that is, it takes into play, not only we're trying to get as much money as possible, because that in the end is, uh, is what marketing feeds into is a sales process, but it also is completely ethical and it doesn't force you to be someone that you're not going to be. So what is marketing truly? Marketing is giving opportunities for people to have their needs met. Marketing is, is like a gatekeeper seeking to help someone with a need find their way. 
Marketing is the mom yelling dinner to get her kids back inside from playing. It's the tour guide saying, you'll want to look to your right. It's the friend saying, oh, if you like ice cream, then you have to check out this ice cream place. Marketing is seeing people with a need and it's giving them the opportunity to fill that need. Whether it's food, whether it's uh, a good time, whether it's a vacation, a ring, or they have a need for uh, a sense of personal fulfillment, you see these needs and you help that person by giving them opportunities. And as you can see in this definition, it truly is more about people and their needs than it is about you and your business. Marketing done right is not about you. It's about others. It's about people. It's about what they need. And we don't need to get into the difference of what a need is and what a want is, because in the end, no one truly, you can always find a context in which somebody doesn't need something. Um, every need is contextual. You need food to survive, but you don't always need food. You don't need food 24 seven. You only need food in order to have enough calories that your body doesn't completely deteriorate. In the context of getting engaged, you do need an engagement ring to present your wife or your fiance, or sorry, your girlfriend with an engagement ring. In the context of wanting to look beautiful out at dinner, you do need earrings to have the feeling of standing out and looking beautiful and like someone that people should should look at and should regard uh, as beautiful. And so don't get caught up on the word needs there. Uh, every need has a context. Even the ones that we always think of as just wants, there's always a context where it is a need. And your marketing is giving people opportunities for those needs to be met. So now we're going to get into a little bit of what this sell before build idea is. Um, so again, like I said, you can use marketing to guarantee that whatever you're going to make will sell. And I know it's really scary to get into business and not knowing, hey, are people going to like this? Are they not going to like this? Is that is this what they want? Is this not what they want? If you use sell before build and this, this idea of sell before build, you will be guaranteed to when you start marketing your product to get sales because you've already done the hard work of making sure that it's something that they actually want to buy. So again, marketing is just a small part of the entrepreneur's operating system. And when we come and talk about sell before build, we're talking about having a valuable offer that they, that when you go to market it, they truly will want to buy and they being your ideal audience. So when we use sell before build, we can guarantee that your marketing will be successful in leading to sales because the value that you're giving to somebody else is hitting their pain points so exactly. So how can you know that people want to buy what you have to offer? And that's a great question. So here's the sell before build concept. Here is your prospect. And if you look, this is where your prospect currently is. Over here, this target, this is where your prospect wants to be. And in the middle, we have what we like to call the gap. Every single person has gaps. That's something that we need to agree on. And those gaps could be anything. So your prospect is currently over here and they want to get there, but they're not there. And in order to get from here to there, there's a gap and they need to bridge this gap. And that's where your perfect offer comes in. We're going to talk about what your perfect offer is, how to create that perfect offer, and how we can make sure that your perfect offer truly does bridge that gap so that, that person goes from where they are to where they want to be. So your perfect offer is the way. If they want to get to where they want to be, we position your perfect offer right in the middle of the gap and say, this is what you need in order to get here through marketing. Again, marketing is giving people the opportunity saying this offer 
will meet your needs. So people can have their needs met if we do marketing properly. So here's just an example of what I mean by this. Your prospect currently says, I'm, I'm currently 260 pounds and I'm dissatisfied with the way that I look. Now, where do they want to be? Ideally, they'd like to be at, I'm the perfect weight and I can keep the weight off and I love the way that I look. Well, if your perfect offer is standing in the middle, then it says, hey, I can get you from where you currently are to where you want to be. I can get you from 260 pounds and dissatisfied with the way you look to being the perfect weight, being able to keep that weight off and loving the way that you look. That could be somebody's gap that you could fill. Maybe it's, I have no time for myself anymore. Now where they want to be is, I finally feel free to do whatever I want in life. And if your perfect offer says, hey, you have no time for yourself anymore, but through what I'm offering and what we're offering, we can get you to, I finally feel free to do whatever I want in my life. Then that person will be compelled to take a look at what it is that you have to offer. Maybe your prospect is that I want to get engaged, but I do not know where to go. Um, I don't know about jewelers. I have no idea anything about jewelry. And I get this all the time as someone who works in the jewelry industry, and you probably do too. People are always asking for advice about engagement rings. You know, how much is too much? How much should I spend? How much should I budget for this kind of thing all the time? Now, where they want to be is my wife will not stop talking about her ring, and I am so proud of myself. You know, it's it's looking at her ring um, as it sparkles on an airplane uh, as you're sitting next to her on your way to your honeymoon. It's uh, 20 years later, and she doesn't want it to be upgraded. She doesn't want anything to be changed about it. She's just always telling you, hey, I got another compliment on my ring today. Um, and that's the gap. And if your offer fills that gap perfectly, then you have something truly, truly good, a truly great opportunity that will meet that person's need. Or how about your prospect is that I wish I were known for my style and where they want to be at is all my friends want to copy me now. Well, if your perfect offer shows them how to do that, your perfect offer gets them from having no style, having no idea what their style is to all their friends wanting to be just like them then what you just did was fulfill a need in the context of their lives. Maybe it's, I wonder if my husband still treasures me like he used to. I know a lot of people uh, deal with this and they struggle with this. And if your offer can get that person to, every time I look at my hand, I know that I'm cherished. That's a different way of thinking about it than just selling a piece of jewelry. If your offer is positioned in a way and it's true and it ethically, it just is true and, and, it, and it works like this, then your offer will truly get your prospect from where they are to where they want to be, to their target. And if you can position it in that way, then they'll be compelled to want to buy from you. Maybe it's my wife won't stop bugging me about upgrading her engagement ring, but the diamond she wants is outrageously expensive and your perfect offer says to that person that I can get you to, I haven't felt respected by my wife like this in a long time. I wish I'd known about that jeweler a long time ago. What a perfect solution at such a reasonable price point. So it, it really could be so many things. This identifying the gap. So what is it that is, is standing in between where the prospect is and where the prospect want to be, wants to be, and then filling it with your offer. And so what we do is identify the gap first, and then we craft your offer to fill that gap perfectly. So when we talk about sell before build, what we're talking about is fixing one of the biggest mistakes that I see in marketing, especially with jewelers all the time. And it's that you're normally just thinking from the business's perspective rather than the audience's perspective. And that's huge. If you cannot get into their head, and I'm going to teach you in this, in this training, you're going to learn, not this particular video, but in another video, you're going to learn exactly how to get into that person's head, exactly how to know what that gap is, how your offer can fill their need. Uh, you're going to be able to think from their perspective, and I'm going to teach you and train you to do that 
so that you'll be able to see where they are, where they want to be, and help them to get there. And so sell before build is truly getting to know your audience to the point where you can write a day in their diary. You want to be able to take one day in the in your prospect's life, your ideal client's life, and write it out. Just know everything they're thinking, everything that they're wanting, what they normally go through. And I'll teach you how to be able to do this. I, I will train you to think this way because this is how marketers win. This is how things really get sold. This is how you create perfect offers that are irresistible. Perfect, perfect offers. It also starts the conversation about their needs and their problems. So ultimately marketing is about them. And so sell before build is starting the conversation about them, what they need, what their wants are, what their gaps are. It then tests on a small portion or what we call a minimum viable audience or MVA so that you can tell whether or not this is going to go anywhere. And then we garner excitement to launch later on with a larger supply and more marketing backing. And I'll teach you how to do this. It's a, uh, it's a product launch and I'll show you how to do a product launch and how it is that you can perfectly um, execute one of these so that if you do have a product that you've had a little bit of success with because you have perfectly figured out everything the audience wants, you've created the perfect offer and it's worked, I'll teach you how to scale it so that you can take something small and you can blow it up. Because remember, that little audience, your minimum viable audience, is a representative of a much, much larger audience out there that exists that you have not yet marketed to. So now that we understand the entrepreneur's operating system, the misconceptions about what marketing is not, we have a helpful definition. Uh, we're going to go back into marketing success. And so we're going to just go back to the marketing system and we're going to talk about the outputs that good marketing provides. So the outputs of marketing are sales opportunities, views on videos, email leads, website traffic, booked appointments, sales meetings. So marketing done right creates these. It brings people in. It gives the sales process the opportunity to work. And marketing is successful when it creates sales opportunities with, and get this, the right people. Now, I know a lot of times we can get sales opportunities and it's easy if you on if you want to just throw up a video on Instagram of um, very scantily clad women, you're going to get a lot of reactions and a lot of um, engagement, but not the kind of engagement that you want. It's not going to get you any sales because you're getting the wrong people. Marketing done right gets you a lot of the right people or the right amount of the right people. I'm going to teach you how to do that. So we measure success when we get those opportunities. And what we do is we reiterate what we do to get more of those opportunities or more of those opportunities at a lower cost, making everything more efficient. So marketing, that is our what is marketing video and I hope that you've learned something and I'm excited to see you in the next video.